Section 2.3 Conditional Probability and Independence In this video I'm going to cover the definition of conditional probability. To begin, I will define contingency table. Well, a contingency table is a table of distribution uh, that is used to summarize the relationship between two variables. In this example, I have a company that is producing roads and um, these roads are characterized by two different dimensions the diameter and the length um, for quality purposes and um, the diameter has to be in between a range and so the diameter can be classified as too thin okay or too thick in the same way the length can be classified as too short, OK, and too long. So one of the variables is the diameter and is um, on the and is going to be represented by the columns and the second variable is going to be the length and is going to be represented by the rows. So the intersection point is going to give us the frequency of elements that are in both categories. For example, uh, from the 1,000 roads that are producing, we can find that 10 are have a length that is too short and uh, the diameter is too thin. In the same way, this 4 is representing that the length is OK, but the diameter is too thick. On the marginal column, of in the right we are going to have the sum of the rows and that sum of the rows will represent actually the sum of all the rows that have two short length and different diameters so 18 rows are the rows that are too short 942 rows are the rows that are okay and four roads are the roads that are too long. In the same way, the last row is, repre is representing the sum of the columns. So it's representing, like in the second case, the number of diameters, the number of roads whose diameter is OK. So in this case, 928. So those values on the margin are called the marginal values so either the right margin or the bottom margin are called marginal values and the numbers on the table those frequency represent the intersection of events in this particular case the total number is 1000 so it is very convenient because it will give us a sense of the proportion so we can tell that actually this 900 is 90% uh, uh, of the roads are have a length that is okay and the diameter is okay but if the total number is not 1000 the best thing that we can do is divide the table the full table with the marginal values and everything by 1000 so by doing that what we can obtain is the table of proportions and those proportions will represent now probabilities so this is the probability of a road to be with a length too short and the diameter ok and uh, those values again inside the table will represent the intersection so that's going to represent now joint probabilities The marginal values will represent the probability of certain events. Like for example, in the first row, we have that 0 0.018 is the probability of the bars to have a length too short. Let's have a look now to the definition of conditional probability. Conditional probability is the probability of an event 
given that another event occurs. So that's the condition that some other event is occurring. So for example, what is the probability that the diameter is okay given that the length is okay? So if we look into our table of frequency, so we are going to highlight what are what is the event that all the length are okay. So these are the length okay. So in total we have 942 um, rods whose length is okay. And from those we are going to look into the ones that whose diameter is okay. So that's 900. So the conditional probability we only look to this subset. So the subset of the length is okay. So in our case, the probability of the diameter is okay given that the length is okay is going to be equal to 900, which are the cases in which the diameter is okay, from the ones whose length is okay, which is 942. So that's equal to 0 0.95. Notice that I introduced an element, new element here, and is this bar, and is this bar is read as given that. Now, how do we do this uh, when the table is given in terms of probabilities? So that's going to be our general case. So we can identify here the two events. First of all, I'm going to identify the event in which uh, uh, the length is okay, and I'm going to call that event B. So that's the row. And um, event A is going to be the event in which the diameter is okay we are looking into the probability of A occurs given that B occurred and is going to be defined as the intersection of the probability of the intersection of A with B divided by the probability of B In a Venn diagram, how do we, we can see that? So we have our two events, A and B. So we are looking into our big set is B because that's the condition. So we are only looking into B. So B is this event. And the question is, what is the probability of A happening if B is happening. So, in fact, what we are looking is to the intersection. So the only possibility for A to be happening, if we are looking in only into this subset, is the intersection. So our element is in the intersection. So how do we write this then? So we have the probability of the intersection, which is 900. So that's the probability of A intersection B. And this is the probability of B. So that's going to be 0 0.9 divided by 0 0.9. 942 and this is equal to 0 0.95 example we have a process that manufactures aluminum cans so the probability that a can has a flaw on the side is 0 0.2 we're going to call this event a on the side the flaw is on the side so let's say that this is the flaw it's broken now 
the probability that can has a flow on the top is 0 0.03 so that's going to be event B so something broken over there that's B and uh, we have that the probability that a can has a flow on both the sides and the top is 0 0.01 and when we say and we are saying the intersection so the probability of the intersection is 0 0.01 now the question is find the probability that I can has have a flow on the sides given that the flow is on the top so that's conditional because it's selecting from a subset that is the subset of the can that had a flow on the top so how do we solve this by definition the probability of a given B, given that event B is happening, we have that this is equal to the probability of the intersection divided by the probability of B. And we have all this information. So therefore, this is going to be equal to the probability of intersection, which is equal to 0 0.01, divided by the probability of B, which is 0 0.03. 0 0.03 and that's equal to 0 0.33 how can we visualize that in the table of contingency so we have two variables which are going to be the top and the side and the category of each variable is going to be flow or ok so we have I'm going to have this variable is the top and the categories are is with a flow or the is okay and the side we have two categories with a flow or okay so what was the information that um, was given so the probability that I can has a flow on the side so we are looking to a marginal probability here because it's independent on the other so it's the sum of all of them so that's 0 0.02 also we have the probability that a can has a flow on the top and it's 0 0.03 so for the top one with the flow so that's also going to be a marginal probability because it's the probability of the full event so that's 0 0.03 but also we have the information about the intersection of the two events in the case that the side and the top have a flow so that's going to be equal to 0 0.01 another example this is the shortest route versus the scenic route so imagine that we are traveling from San Angelo to Denver, Colorado and we can take either the highway which is straight and boring or we can take some road over the mountain I will put some imagination in that okay now we are going to define E1 as the event that road 1 is open and E2 is the event that road 2 is open and the probabilities are given so the probability that uh, road 1 is open is 0 0.75 the probability that road 2 is open is 0 0.50 and the probability that both are open is 0 0.40 now the question is what's the probability that road 1 is open given that road 2 is open so that's conditional so we solve it using some conditional probability so here we have the probability of E1 given that E2 occurs so probability of road 1 being open given that road 2 is open so this is going to be equal to the probability of the intersection E1 intersection E2 divided the probability of E2 so to remember we always divide by the second term in the conditional probability 
and so we have the values the intersection the probability of the intersection is 0 0.40 and the probability of road 2 being open is um, 0 0.5 so this is equal to 0 0.8 so that's the conditional probability now let's do it a little bit more interesting what is the probability of road 1 is open given that road 2 is closed for this I will actually use a table of contingency we have two variables road 1 and road 2 and we have two categories is either open or close so let me put it here so we have road 1 road 2 and it could be open and close open and close now the information that we have from from the problem is that the probability that e1 is open is 0 0.75 so E1 is the probability of road 1 open is 0 0.75 so where do we put the 0 0.75 this is a marginal probability it, because it's only talking about road 1 now the probability of road 2 being open is 0 0.50 road 2 open this is 0 0.5 so if I have to write the event, so that's going to be event 1, and this is going to be event 2. Now the probability of intersection of both open is also given, and is equal to 0 0.4. That's the intersection of both open. Now let's look into the question. So what is the probability of road 1 is open given that road 2 is closed? So road 2, it will be the complement of event 2. So that will be the complement, E2 complement. Because if it's not open, it's closed. So we need to look into this value here. Now let put it in terms of um, conditional probability the probability of event 1 given that so road 1 open given that road 2 is closed so E2 complement so that's road 2 close so this is going to be equal to the probability of the intersection of E1 intersected with E2 complement divided by the probability of E2 complement now we need to look into this intersection and we need to look into this probability so we need this value and we need the intersection of E1 E2 complement E1 which is this and E2 complement so we are looking into this value how do we find that value well we know that the sum of this column is equal to 0 0.75 so if this is 0 0.4 this should be 0 0.35 so 0 0.4 plus 0 0.35 is equal to 0 0.75 so this should be 0 0.35 now what is the probability of row to be closed so we know that the sum of this has to be equal to 1 let me put the 1 here so the probability of E2 complement should be equal to 0 0.5 because it needs to be equal to 1 now we can put the values so the probability of intersection <coughs> which is 0 0.35 in other words we did 0 0.75 minus 0 
and divided by the probability of E2, zero point complement, zero point five. So zero point thirty five divided by zero point five. Using the Venn diagrams we can also illustrate this conditional probability. We have the two events E1 and E2 and we need E2 complement. E2 complement is everything outside E2. Let me highlight it. So that's going to be E2 complement. This is E2 complement. And um, the intersection of E2 complement with E1 is this section. So this is the intersection of E1 with E2 complement.